Welcome back to Danganronpa 2, Goodbye Despair. We're in the middle of the first trial, and already I've realized that I made a mistake in how I assume things to be. I have a big problem with that, where I will, from the initial evidence gathering, make a assumption, and then I'm very reluctant to let that assumption go. Because it was even though I knew the knife wasn't what killed Byakuya, because we of the autopsy, I never edited my idea, but it's very obviously the missing skewer that did it. I am weird, aren't I? At times like this, I'd rather be fantasizing about tonight's main dish. Ooh, you totally mean that in a perverted way. Of course he does. The knife was brought in the journal case along with night vision goggles, too? No, that's not possible. The knife was hidden in the dining hall before the party even started. I should be able to prove it. Because the duct tape. I see! There was duct tape left under the table where the body was found. Huh? Duct tape? They probably hit the knife by duct taping it to the underside of the table. Oh, so that's why we found duct tape there. Though Byakuyo was thorough. Even he couldn't have noticed a weapon taped to the underside of the table. This may be off topic, but why was Byakuya acting so paranoid? Not only did he bring a self-defense kit, but he had night vision goggles inside the case too. And the real question is, why didn't he take the self-defense kit with him? Although granted, someone was underneath the thing stabbing up. That's true. He went above and beyond being a little cautious. Now that you mention it, that applies to the dangerous items he confiscated as well. It's one thing to be a little cautious, but performing a body check is a bit much. Oh, that was totally worth it. Probably knew someone was planning to commit a murder. Are you saying he predicted the murder? Could it be? Was he also in possession of the all-seeing eye? <laughs> you think so too, right, Hajime? That's right, Bianca probably knew that there was a... I can't read that. I mean, I, I assume you want me to talk about this, even though you didn't actually let me read it. I can prove it with this. Everyone, can you please take a look at this? We have hidden information. Be careful, the first kill will happen tonight. Someone will definitely kill someone else. Is this? Hajime and I found this in Yaki's cottage. It looks like a threatening letter someone sent for him. So, who's the someone? Well, that's the thing. I, even if we had a handwriting analysis, that looks like very, very obviously forged handwriting. Nobody besides Monokuma would write such a dumb, threatening letter like that. Wasn't me! Are you sure? <laughs> the only lies I tell are friendly lies! Oh, that's... that's... Um, be sure. Those are still lies! It doesn't matter who wrote it yet. So, Yakuya became paranoid because of this threatening letter? That's what sort of it seems like. He probably decided to throw a party because of the letter. What do you mean? By gathering everyone in one place, he tried to create a situation where everyone could keep tabs on each other. In doing so, tried to put the writer of the letter in a situation where they couldn't act. That makes sense. But the letter might have been just a little prank. As long as he was determined not to let any of us die, he couldn't take that risk. And he was quite determined. A strong sense of responsibility. He made him believe the letter was legitimate. Oh, you should have told us he received a threatening letter. If he had, he would have panicked. Yakuya probably knew that too. That makes sense. And okay, Ibuki, your expression looks way, way inappropriate for the current conversation. So, he tried to do something about it without telling anyone? I That's see. the gist of it. A strong sense of responsibility as our leader was his undoing. Screw that noise! Who the hell wrote that letter? <laughs> Everyone, close your eyes and have the person to do it raise their hand. <laughs> well, obviously, the killer. Killer? I mean, that actually does make a lot of sense. I don't know why we're all surprised. Because they did it in order to... Is it... Yes, it's one of who? Have you not played a Dagon Ronka game before? Among Us, who's the one who killed Byakuya? I am actually now considering um, that it's got to be either... 
Shakai or the Mafia Kid. Because I am now at very much presuming that they were stabbed through the floor with the ice pick. Um, or the steak skewer. And those were the only ones that were outside. Because we do now know you can get underneath it. You can't get underneath it from outside, though, so actually, never mind. Um, but we, we need to talk to um, Earring Boy and find out where the entrance actually is, because that will really, really make a difference. Enough already! Show yourself, you coward! If they were willing to come forward, they never would have committed a murder in the first place. But I still can't believe it. Someone in this room killed Biyaki. There's no way I can believe um, that yet. Pardon me. Can I say something, please? What is it, Miss Sonia? I regret that I must return to this topic, but I just realized something concerning the night vision goggles. Oh, what is it? If Byakuya was indeed wearing those goggles, how did the killer manage to navigate in the dark? You're right. They wouldn't have been able to see anything without the night vision goggles. Yeah, but they would be able to, they would kind of know what was going on because they planned it. If the murderer had the goggles when they took the knife, then how did Byakuya see them? Even if the knife bore some sort of mark, it would have been difficult to see it in that darkness. Nothing difficult to use a mark, because the mark killer was able to get the knife out of the table. The glowing paint. I like those better because those are super easy. was the mark. With that, you'd be able to get the knife even in the dark. In actuality, the knife we found under the table. And the duct tape stuck to the underside of the table were both marked with glowing paint, right? Does that mean the killer painted them in advance? Yeah, that's absolutely what it means. Which again brings me back to my somewhat theory of it being... Uh, there's too many people that could have done it. This is a really well done trial. But painting them with glowing paint? It's as if they knew the blackout was going to happen. Well, of course, they planned it. They overloaded they the circuits. They have already known. That's why they used the glowing paint as a mark. Which means, whoever set up the blackout is the killer. So yeah, I was thinking that they went after Byakuya specifically, but no, Byakuya went to stop them. That seals it. The killer is whoever was in the office with the circuit breaker. Which means it was you, Peko Pekoyama! Peko killed poor Byakuya? Was this island not big enough for two glasses wearers? <laughs> oh, I guess she's not. Wow! How can you believe her so easily? But with Echo's height, I don't think she'd be able to reach the circuit breaker in the office. Plus, the circuit breaker is used to put the power back on. I don't care about a technicality like that. Echo's the one who tripped the breaker and caused the blackout. Not to mention, it wasn't off for long enough for Peko to come back into the room. Driving the breaker directly from the office, Peko was the one who caused the blackout. Is that really what happened? This will be blue colored weak spots will start appearing. If you call the weak spots you see up until now the argue spots, blue colored spots will call it gree spots. When you see a gree spot with the truth bullet, you need to flip your way of thinking. Instead of arguing the other person's testimony contains lies or mistakes, please find the truth bullet that proves the other person's testimony is correct. Oh my god! When the truth bullet is blurred with their weaknesses, it will become logically sound agreement. Is it a little hot in here? From now on, you must infer whether it's best to argue or agree based on what's being debated. If you press the start button during these arguments, you can review the controls. Oh boy! Kai's account and Nekomaru's account. Okay, so. Since Peko was in the office. Real quick, let me remind myself what these are. Nekomaru's account said that someone was in the bathroom up until the blackout. Um, which again is confusing as hell. That, that I still cannot figure out how that could be, because all 15 of us were there and then the kid showed up out front. So, I don't know who that could be. Is Chikai Scout the other one? She could have caused the blackout at any time! That's impossible. Huh? Why is it impossible? Because I was not in the office. Not even before the blackout. I agree with that. There we go. That is an interesting thing. I like that. No, Pekko is telling the truth. Mm hmm. Don't tell me you're crushing on Pekko. Nothing like that at all. 
Nikomaru's account is actually Pekko's alibi. I've been trying to use it many times, but George won't open it at all. It's true. Someone was occupying the bathroom for a long time shortly after the party started, and it was finally freed up after Byakuya's body was discovered. Uh, then the person who was in the bathroom that whole time was actually... Everyone else besides Pekka was in the dining hall after the party started, right? I see. So there's no way anybody else could have locked themselves in the bathroom except Pekka. I... I guess that would be... true. I really don't like that everyone's talking about my bowel movements. You locked yourself in the commode? You should have said so earlier! There's no way she'd actually say that. Gosh, you are so insensitive. <laughs> well, uh, when you're being accused of murder, I think you can put, you know, sensitivity to side to a certain degree. She locked herself in the bathroom for that long? There's no doubt. It's shit. <laughs> oh, there's no way she'd admit it. There's no way she'd admit she was taking a shit. Hey, weren't you guys taught any basic manners, or were you raised in a locker room? Well, he was. Don't you remember who he is? No, I'm sorry. It's fine. How about we stop talking about this and move on to something else? Poor Pekko. So far in this game, she's had to admit that she wears a thong, and she's had to admit that she like <laughs> has no, diarrhea. Don't worry. The smell wasn't that strong. I used the bathroom right after you, so you can trust me. I, I said it's fine. But still, you were in the bathroom for a really long time. Did you get food poisoning or something? As soon as I stepped into the office, I felt this sudden rush of pain in my stomach. Because of that, I was unable to leave the bathroom, including when the blackout occurred. Which I don't think that has any connection to anything else. I don't think there's something that caused that necessarily. How did it feel? Do your business in the dark. Did you get excited? Oh my god. Can I we please say he did it? Stop it. But still, your stomach pain. Was that really just a coincidence? Hey, what's the deal? Don't butt into other people's business, especially if you didn't do any investigating. Huh. I'm only butting in because you fucking idiots are out of your element. He actually is probably pretty good at investigation. Stop this childish nonsense. Just what do you mean by coincidence? What I mean is, is it possible someone slipped her some laxatives? Laxatives? If so, the killer could have tripped the breaker as soon as that girl left the office, don't you think? Well, but no one tripped the breaker. The breaker was... I eh. see. That might have happened. The question is whether Pekka's stomachache was a coincidence or if someone intentionally caused it. When the answer, the outcome of his trial could change drastically. I don't think I don't I don't think that's the case. All right. AC timer. Did you eat anything weird? I don't remember eating anything weird. Okay. Now that you mention it, you brought food to the office, right? Just a little bit from the dining hall. There might have been some laxatives in it, don't you think? Taro Taro cooked the food, how suspicious! I wouldn't do anything like that! Laxatives would ruin the taste! <laughs> okay, so I can't talk about the AC yet. Did you eat anything weird? I don't remember eating anything weird. Party dishes. Now that you mention it... I don't know which one. The office, right? Just a little bit from the dining hall. There might have been some laxatives in it, don't you think? No, I was that's like, wrong. okay, I wasn't sure which one to counter because they both fit equally well. No, it's impossible that laxatives were slipped into the food in the dining hall because Pekka wasn't the only one who ate that food. The Kane ate some of it too. If the food had laxatives in it, I'm pretty sure Akane would have had stomach issues. Because she ate a lot of it. I feel totally fine. Like I said, the, the dishes are innocent. Don't go making weird accusations. <laughs> well, you certainly make weird comments. Apologize for causing a scene. Fuyuhiko should apologize, not you. He's the one who made the laxative accusations. Well, no, I mean, it, it's certainly relevant to explore everything. What did you say, bitch? 
There's this bickering. Let's just dismiss Peko's stomachache as a coincidence and go back to discussing the blackout. Yeah, yeah. We already know that, you trashy skank. You don't have to tell us. T trashy skank? Well, you do kind of flash us on a regular basis. As long as the murder happened during the blackout, the blackout itself is what's actually important. They make clear how the blackout occurred. Okay, here's the AC. Irons in the storage room. There we go. Who tripped the breaker and how did they do it? If you can't answer that, I'm gonna bop you on the head. <laughs> did they throw a stone and hit it? Maybe they used a remote control? They probably messed with the breaker. It does not have to be the breaker. Yep. They may have tampered with the power supply and transmitters. Dang it. Crap. Who tripped the breaker and how did they do it? If you can't answer that, I'm a Oh, I see. Head. That's that's our thing of the Did they throw a stone and hit it? Maybe they used a remote control? They probably messed with the breaker. The breaker. No, it doesn't. They may have tampered with the power supply and transmitters. Or maybe they caused a power surge? There we go. I agree with that. Yeah. It's just as mine, Wu said. The blackout was caused by a power surge. Of course, that's not a coincidence. Someone caused it intentionally. Uh oh, it looks like you're well on board with someone murdered someone. Which is why those three irons were arranged to cause the blackout. When you found them right after the blackout, the irons were still on, right? So by leaving those irons on in the storage room, they deliberately caused a power surge. Yeah, it seems that's how the killer caused the blackout. Stupid fool! Oh, here we go. Uh, with this crazy thing that I don't really like. Hold on a second, let me speak too. What the heck? You say the irons in the storage room were used to trigger the blackout? Yes. That's inexcusable! Here we go. Yes, the AC timer. If the irons in the storage room caused the blackout, and for the killer to turn the irons on. You're saying they went all the way to the storage room? And that means everyone who was in the dine when the blackout occurred can't be a suspect. No, just all right. people were in the dining hall. Doesn't mean they're not a suspect. But the people in the dining hall weren't able to cause the blackout. The irons caused the blackout. Allow me to cut through those words. Okay. Getting better at it. I still don't quite know how I tell if it's up or down or left or right. The irons are just one reason the blackout occurred, but they weren't the direct trigger. Yep. The direct trigger was when the air conditioners in the dining hall and office clicked on. The air conditioners! The timers for both air conditioners were set to 11.30 p.m. 11.30 p.m.? Mr. Ham Ham's died around that time, too! Please stop calling him that! He's a brilliant and wonderful man. When the timers activated the air conditioners, the breaker was tripped and caused a blackout. One thing I have to say real quick, because I'm not really reacting to the fact that Bayakuya died, um, primarily because it's a Dagon, Dagon Rampa game and you expect people to die. Um, however, I'm very, very... I'm convinced that this is some sort of simulation and that's not actually Bayakuya or his death is not permanent or something. Um, they would not have so drastically changed his appearance if it was meant... And everything he was doing, everything he was saying, made it clear that he is not really connected to the Bayakuya from the first game. Even though he's got the exact same name. So, for those of you that may be like, I can't believe just how calm he's being about Bayakuya dying. I'm just, I'm very, very, very suspicious and convinced that it's... Bayakuya is the... I, I'm treating them like separate characters. Because it, there's something else going on. Um... I don't know if anyone's asked about that or commented on that, but yeah. I just thought I'd talk about that because I was just sort of like, you know... I was just talking about how, oh, don't call him, he's a wonderful person. That's the first time that in my brain I sort of 
made the jump back to Danganronpa 1, just how much I really, really, really respect Bayakuya. And I thought, ooh, I'd better kind of talk about sort of why I didn't really react to his death then. I see! I understand! Indubitably! Indubitably? They probably checked the old building's energy usage in advance, and used the irons to nearly max it out. How would they check that? But once they set the air conditioner's timers, they just had to wait until they started up on their own. If so, even if Pekka was in the office, it still would have been possible to cause a blackout, indubitably. Indubitably? <laughs> Miss Sonia, not you too. Regarding the energy usage, they probably asked Monokuma about it. Dun dun dun! Is she right? Such a hateful fear! You deserve to die a thousand deaths! Well, he's already died a couple. A thousand, you say? If I died that many times, I might really stay dead, you know? Shut up! You guys just stay quiet! I couldn't have prevented the blackout even if I was in the office. Even so, I feel regret. If I was in the office, I could have reset the breaker in time. And maybe the murder wouldn't have occurred. Yeah, but you couldn't reach it. No. The breaker in the office was built into a high area of the wall that's impossible to reach. Resetting the breaker in that darkness would have been impossible. No matter what. Sounds like you don't need to blame yourself. Oh, hey, they're standing next to each other. No, they're not. Well, are they? Yeah, no, that's definitely a bookie. Even so, the killer is so sly. I'm starting to worry we may never actually find them. It's all right. You don't have to worry. Ooh. There's the original game protagonist's confidence. They're just a petty killer, right? They can't defeat symbols of hope like you guys. Never mind. There's uh -huh. no way everybody will lose now. This little incident will just be a stepping stone for you all. Wow, that is an incredibly weird and suspicious thing to In say. The end, hope always wins. That's what I believe. Why is this like being accompanied by such ominous music? Nagito? W what happened to you? Huh? What do you mean? Well, you have been saying this whole time that there's no way a killer could be among us. Huh. Is that so? Well, let's just put that minor detail aside for now and talk about the incident. This is... where is... where is this coming from? For now, we found out how the blackout occurred. But the question is, who caused it, right? Anybody could have hid and set the timers for the air conditioners. Setting up the irons in the storage room could have been done before Byakuya set foot in the old building. Which... is... you? What a shame. Any one of us is capable of that. What are you implying? He's just saying, after all this time, we still haven't made any progress. But n that's not true, because Byakuya was in the building before most of us got there, except for you. Even though we have been arguing for so long? Fortunately, it's the truth. It sounds like he's resigned. Despite the fact that we've discussed this at length, there's not even one clue that leads to the killer. But that might be because... There's no way any of us could be a killer. You, you're changing your story again? Anyway, yeah, this is weird. I have an idea about what we all should do at this point. Has anyone thought about our situation like this? Instead of surviving by doubting others, isn't it better to get killed for believing in others? He is the freaking killer. I actually didn't put it on him. That's interesting and weird. And what knocked Shikai over? Was she just clumsy? Doesn't that mean... Are you saying we should all just give up and die? Nagito, there's definitely something wrong with you. <laughs> you guys only think there's something wrong with me because there's something wrong with you. Suspecting each other like this. There's no way that's healthy behavior. Wow, this is so weird. already. We don't have to find out who the killer is. Yeah, I wonder why you would say I can't that. Stand this anymore? I don't want to do this to my friends. I, I don't want to do this either. <laughs> me too. Please take me home already. What? 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 Uh, I want to go home and eat candy. Stop it! If everyone acts like this, I, I'm gonna. 
Everyone calm down. We're all friends, aren't we? There's no way one friend would murder another. Then why did Byakuya die? Who cares? Let's just give up already. Wow, you are not the ultimate hope anymore, for sure. There are no clues that lead to the killer anyway. Not a single one. Yeah, there is. You already kind of talked about it. That's wrong. I think. <laughs> did you say something? Guys, we've already found a clue that might point to who the killer is. Yeah, there's none before Biyaki got there, but he got there before everyone except for um, our chef and our lucky you know student. Who the killer is? The killer? I don't know, but we do have a clue about a suspicious person. I think. I see. Then care to tell me what's this clue you're talking about? First of all, let's try thinking about how the killer was able to obtain the knife during the blackout. Didn't we already cover that? They use glowing paint as a mark. No, not that. I mean before that. Before? Is she asking how the killer got close to that table? Even if they had to obtain the knife by relying on the glow of the paint in order to do that, they had to close the table while it was still dark. Let's try examining the situation. My hero's diagram might be useful. Here. Interesting. Where is this going? I feel like I've. I feel like the the um game completely pulled the rug out from under me because I'm very I'm I'm starting to doubt my soda guess. Diagram of where everyone was standing before the blackout, right? Um, here it is. Hmm, Nagito is the closest one. Interesting. Just as I thought. The diagram is the clue. Who the killer is now they're able to move the table in the dark. That's clearly shown in this diagram. First, we discussed how the killer was able to move to that table in the dark. So they'll probably use something to help them move in the dark. Select a suspicious spot. Here. Yep, the lamp cord. John must have used the desk lamp to move to that table in the dark. The desk lamp. I hope you don't mean they turned on a light or something. There was a blackout. There's no way the killer could have used the desk lamp. Of course, nobody used the desk lamp slide. The killer actually used the power cord. It with this. They didn't turn the desk lamp on. They used its power cord. Power cord? They could have felt their way to that table using the power cord, right? By doing that, the killer was able to move to the table and use the glowing paint to find the knife. And. There's only one person here who could have done that. That annoys me a little bit, actually, because when I very first said it, I said it had to either be the chef or it had to be my... But to a certain degree, I didn't want it to be um, Nagito, because he kind of reminded me of my hero from before. You're the only one! Nagito, it was you, wasn't it? M me? Judging from everyone's positions before the blackout, the only person near the power cord was you. Which means, the only one who could have felt their way to the table using the power cord was... Nagito! Absolutely. Okay, wow, this is really well done. I'm, this is much... I don't want to say it's harder than the ones in the first one, but the... Everything comes together a lot better. That's just a coincidence. That's true. You had a chance, right? A chance to hide the knife under the table? When he was cleaning. I see. Because, yeah, he was the only one here. Nagito, weren't you cleaning the dining hall all morning? If so, you would have had a chance to hide the knife. That's... If you factor in the power cord and the time you spent cleaning, you're the only one who could have done it. Seriously? That's all just a coincidence! Oh man, I really like Nagito. If it was just one coincidence, it'd be fine. But when it's one right after another, I wonder... Is something like that even possible? Could it be? 
Did you give yourself cleaning duty on purpose so you could hide the knife under the table? Now that you mention it, Nagito did prepare the drawing to pick who cleaned the dog. Everyone considered that. To be honest, I already prepared a drawing because I assumed something like this would ha I should have cleaned on that. I really should have. To go to the trouble of preparing this, so what did you think would happen? Whoever draws the chopstick with a red mark on it will be in charge of cleaning, okay? Does that sound fair? You rigged the drawing, didn't you? That's how you got picked to clean the dining hall, isn't it? I don't know if you're the killer or not, but regardless, it proves that you're suspicious, right? If that's the case, that strange speech you made earlier, that was part of your plan, too. Yeah, he's trying to get us to give up. You us to lower our guard and tried to hide the fact that you did it, didn't you, you motherfucker? <laughs> well, just admit it already! <laughs> Nagito, tell me you object to this. Frankly, I don't want to believe it either. We investigated together. You were so kind. I can't believe you're the one who killed Yakuya. <laughs> Nagito, say something! <laughs> Is he the culprit? Or, the, I mean, the ally of... <laughs> Man, this per he's acting like he's one of the despair cults. How wonderful! How beautiful it is! Huh? Th those eyes! At that moment, Nagito's eyes. The darkness in his eyes shone brightly as if layers upon layers of darkness were folding in on each other. As if hope and despair had been crudely mixed together. Let's cut to the chase. You're correct. It was my doing all along. Okay, um, I might be cutting here, I might not, it depends. We seem to be at the very, very end of, like, this bit, but we're also at the end of the episode, so... Basically, if I get to a good song voice for the next ten minutes, then we'll just, like, append it here. Otherwise, I will see you next episode. Wow, this trial ended a lot quicker than I thought it would. I was expecting, like, a two-hour ordeal. I'm the one who hid the knife under the table before the party started. I don't get to make a comic I book. One who used the power cord to find my way to the table in the dark. And of course, I'm the one who caused the blackout. After all, there's no way I'd knowingly whip out a knife in front of everyone. Right. Uh, is it just me, or does he seem a little nuts right now? A little bit, yeah. I never expected Yakuya to have night vision goggles. 